What's going on YouTube? I'm a god here and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Immersion RC's new Vortex Mini FPV quad. Uh, this specific video I will only be going over the initial setup uh, as well as a quick overview of the OSD system that's, in, that's included uh, in this mini quad. I'm not going to go over the actual uh, quad itself or the hardware just because the versions that I've got are all prototype versions which are going to be a little bit different from what you guys are going to get when you get the production versions obviously. Uh, so I'll save another video for that later. Uh, so again, the main goal here is just to kind of get you to understand what to expect uh, from an OSD standpoint as well as what to do when you first get your Vortex uh, so that you can go ahead and get up and get started uh, and flying. And the best thing about this that I like the most is that you really don't need a laptop uh, to do like 99% of the things that you would want to, uh, which makes things a whole lot easier. Um, another thing also really quickly is I'm also making the assumption that you've already got a compatible uh, radio and receiver, uh, which needs to be PPM because that's what the Vortex is uh, is expecting. Um, and there should be a link in the in my description. If you're not running a PPM or if you're running like S Bus or something like that, the instruction manual does have a listing of part numbers that you could use to make sure that you can go ahead and connect to this. All right. Okay. Next, on the production version, you should have a servo cable for your receiver coming out of this area right here. Uh, on mine, I just happened to reroute that and have it come out the bottom because I actually prefer to mount my receiver underneath this tab. However, it was designed for it to go ahead and pop up out of here and mount your receiver over in this area. And today I'm gonna be using this with the uh, Easy UHF system. Now the Vortex is gonna come uh, by default with the video transmitter set to the Fat Shark band uh, and channel one. So what you're going to want to do is get your goggles and or immersion VTX uh, and make sure that that sets channel so that you could receive it. Now for all the other folks who might be running a boss cam receiver, you can still also do the same thing. Um, so, but what you're going to do is again, you're going to take your receiver, set that to channel one, but down here at the back of your vortex on the LED board, you'll notice that there's a button right there. And if you push that button for two seconds, what that will do is it's, it will cycle itself to the next band uh, and to channel one. So just keep holding that for two seconds and keep cycling through. There's a total of four bands until you find the one that matches your receiver. Okay, so I've got my fat shark goggles plugged in. The vortex is powered up and I am on channel one, so I'm seeing what you're seeing on the screen now in my goggles. Uh, so this first step is basically to teach the Vortex what your channel mapping is on your specific radio. So we'll go ahead and walk through this and you can follow on the other screen here and what I'm doing with my actual radio. So first it wants us to center all controls, so let's do that. Okay, so move the roll control left and hold. Uh, and just a quick reminder, I'm running a mode two uh, transmitter, so the throttle control is here on the left hand side. Uh, so roll would be here on this side, so I'm gonna do that. Great, puts it back, identifies it that it's a roll. Now we wanna go ahead and move the yaw, so I'll do that. Great, so it's identified that now. Now it wants me to move the throttle to minimum. There you go. It's now I'll go ahead and move everything back. All right, and then lastly would be the pitch stick right here. So we'll move that back and hold. Great, now it wants me to use the left stick, which is this one, to go back and left. So right there and great. Now it wants to bring everything back to neutral. Now it wants to level the quad and move the right stick back and hold. And what this is doing uh, is basically setting the accelerometer so that that's good. Uh, and so what you want to make sure is that your quad is nice and level when you do this so that way your accelerometer is properly calibrated. So I'm going to do that now. And now we're all done. So when you first power up your Vortex, this is the first screen that you should see. As you'll notice that it automatically recognizes that you're running a 4S, uh, as well as some of the uh, important settings that you'd want to know before you go ahead and take off. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. To enter the OSD menu, what you want to do is throttle down and yaw left. To navigate, you're going to want to use your right stick up and down and then roll right to get into a menu and roll left to get out of the menu. So let's hop into the OSD setup. Landscape would be all of the different layouts that the OSD is capable of doing. You've got Easy OSD, Air Race, Heads Up Display, and Gamer. So let's go ahead and jump into these right now. So this is the Easy OSD layout, and this is the layout that's actually got the most information out of all of them. Starting at the very bottom would be the battery voltage, and right above that would be the uh, milliamps consumed per minute, which is actually pretty helpful because that helps you know if, uh, if you're flying at a rate that's just killing your battery or if you're flying at a very conservative rate. In the middle, you've got your current consumption. To the right, you've got the actual uh, milliamps consumed. Right above that would be the flight time as well as the estimated flight time. And what I like about that is it does update in real time. So as you're flying, it, uh, it knows how much flight time you've got left depending on how hard you're flying. The upper right hand corner, you've got your flight mode, your altitude. In the upper left hand corner, you've got the RSSI as well as the channel that you're transmitting on and then your pseudo name. And this is the air race layout. This is very minimal. This is my favorite. When you're racing or uh, flying hard, really the only thing you want to pay attention to is your battery life. And so uh, Immersions have made that really easy for you by just giving you an actual graphical display in the form of a bar. So the harder you fly, you're, and you should start seeing that bar to actually decrease. Same thing at the upper right hand corner, you've got your flight time and remaining flight time. And then in the upper left hand corner is your flight mode. Heads up display gives you more of uh, lets you know what angle your your vortex is at. So you can see if I'm pitching it forward, you see that you're roughly 20 degrees, 25 degrees, and I start to turn it and bank it, you start to see that as well. The gauge on the right would be your altitude. Gamer, I'm going to leave for a second. Margins. This determines how far to the outer edges the data on your screen appears. So here's normal. You can see all the data is pushed out to the very far edges. But depending on your goggles or monitor, or if you prefer, you can actually have that come in closer. So safe will bring it a little bit closer. HD will bring it the closest, and we'll take a look at that. So you can see all of the data is closer to the middle of the screen. Pseudo, that's basically your screen name, and this actually gets helpful because at FPV meets or races, people who are tuning in, if you've got this displayed, everybody knows who they're watching. Pack capacity is very important, obviously. Uh, this is what determines um, or allows the OSD to calculate it, your estimated flight time, so that's something you'll definitely want to make sure that you're setting up correctly. Uh, I like to run 1800 MOS as well as 1300. Beeper frequency, to be honest with you, I have no idea what this changes. Alarm setup. So you can turn this off or on by just hitting the right stick. Battery milliamp, so again, this all depends on what you configure at the front end, but this will let you know once you've reached approximately 30% of your pack capacity. For battery voltage, um, there's an alarm for that as well. Uh, this will actually determine if you're running 3S or 4S, and from there, once you reach a certain battery voltage point, it will actually sh give you some type of an alarm. Um, I'm not 100% sure where this is at. I believe it's your standard 3.5 or maybe even 3.6 uh, volts per cell. So uh, that might be something we need to confirm. For UHF status, if you're running the Easy UHF, um, this does take in the RSSI, and if it runs below a certain point, that will flash at you. And flight time, 
Uh, this will also flash at you once you've reached, I believe, uh, less than one minute left in your estimated flight time. The LED setup menu is what allows you to change what the LED array on the back of your Vortex does. Everything from just having a fixed color, which is helpful for uh, when you need to identify who's who in a race, um, to having it blink, to having it just be turned off. Um, you can actually even have it do certain things depending on your, th your throttle range. You might have a certain intensity, or you can have it just fade from one color to another color. The video setup screen is what allows you to change the channel that you're on. And this is really helpful at a meet or at a race because it allows you to actually visually see where everybody else might be on the 5.8 band. So you've got your frequency, the band, so you can cycle through between the Immersion RC or some of the, the new race band or even some of the existing boss cam bands. And to change the channel, you'd actually go down here and flip through. And when you flip through, you'll notice that there's a little asterisk uh, that lets you know exactly where you're at. So again, this is very helpful when you're at a meet or at a race because then you can find out where everybody else is at and then you can go ahead and choose a channel that is far away from everybody else. So the flight control setup menu is where you would actually go in to do your PID tuning. And you've got three profile blanks that you could save your PID tunes to. Um, so if you go into profile one or go into the PID setup, you'll see this is where you can change everything. And to change it, you just enter in, again, right stick and then up or down to change your value. And then you use left stick to go ahead and save that. This would be the screen for some of the other flight modes such as angle and horizon. The FC setup, or the flight control setup, this is where you can change your actual loop time as well as change what PID controller you want to use. So you choose that, left stick again to save, and you're good. Lastly, you can go ahead and uh, calibrate your accelerometer. So you want to put your vortex on a level surface, go right stick, and you'll hear it beep. And that lets you know it's done. The Pro Tuning section is basically a list of PID tunes collected from all of the different test pilots um, and for different uh, flying styles. So if you, as you cycle through this, what you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner is the different components that was used. So if you wanted to use this, you would go through and first select what profile you wanted to use. So let's say you wanted to use this one. Um, you then go down here and select which profile you want to save this to. And again, just as a reminder, this is going to save both the PID tune as well as the RC settings uh, that this tester has used. And then you go down here and actually hit uh, right, and that will apply it to the profile that you've chosen. Now, one thing I want to point out is um, whenever you see the Cobra CM2204 motor uh, described down here at the lower left-hand corner, we are talking about the 1960 KV version and not the 2300. So please, please, please do not run the 2300 KV motor on a 5045 prop. We have a feeling that that's gonna do bad things to the ESC and we definitely don't want you to do that. So some of you savvy folks have probably noticed by now by looking in the manual um, that there's something called the game mode. So what's that? So game mode is actually pretty cool and I'm really glad that Immersion decided to keep this in for the production version of the OSD because it adds another challenge you know to the mix when you're competing against your friends so it's not just based on your lap time. Um, and what am I talking about here right? So you know, if you've ever been to an FPV meet before, or even some of the races that I've seen like online, what you notice is that sometimes there's a tendency for some people to fly kind of high. 
um, to the point where you not really sure if they're really following the line anymore at that point. And so with game mode, it takes your not only your lap time, but it also takes into account the altitude. So you set this altitude height, let's just say 10 meters, and let's just say that's like right there. And when you take off, it's going to measure where you're at during the whole race. So if you're flying below, you're going to rack up points. And the further below you fly this certain point, the more points you make. The closer to or at the height that you set, you're not making any points. And the higher above this point you fly, you're actually losing points. So let me go show you what I mean. So the first thing you want to do is create your track. And you could use trees, you could use an open field and air gates, whatever you want to do. But what you want to do for sure is just make your track, take a couple laps, and understand what the average lap time should be per lap. Then to set up the game, you want to go into the OSD menu, go to Game Setup, enter in the number of laps the race should take. Then you'll want to enter in the average time it should take you to do one lap, and that's something that you would have done while setting up the course. And then finally, you want to go ahead and set what that altitude height is or that ceiling height will be. Finally, you want to go into the OSD menu and set your landscape to gamer mode, and then you're ready. Now, as soon as you give it throttle, that's when the uh, lap counter starts. That's in the upper left-hand corner. The bar up top would be what I'll just call the lap bar. And you'll notice that there's two markers there uh, to indicate lap one and lap two or however many laps you've got. But it's basically there to just kind of roughly gauge where you should be at in your race course uh, layout or your racetrack. Now that uh, indicator on the left shows you what the, uh, the, the rate of points that you should be getting depending on where you're at with your altitude. In the upper right hand corner you'll see the points that you're currently scoring. And if you fly above the ceiling height that you set, like I'm about to do here, what you'll notice is that I'm losing points. So obviously something you don't want to do, but in my opinion, this is an awesome tool to practice even with yourself just so that you can start managing that altitude height. Because I do believe that the closer to the ground that you fly, the faster around the racetrack you're, you're going. Now what you'll notice too at the bottom, that's your battery gauge. So, so you can keep an eye on that. And then at the very end here, which I should be crashing in just a second, what you'll notice is as soon as you throttle down and disarm, that's when the lap counter stops, and you'll actually get a quick summary of your race. You'll also see a quick flash of the, uh, of the battery level there. So that's game mode. So very simple. No complexity, just straightforward. Makes it easy so you don't need a friend to sit there with a lap counter to keep check on everybody. Again, the altitude height thing I think is fantastic. And in my opinion, this is this is needed, I think. This is an awesome step in the right direction as far as progressing the hobby because up until now, you know, the focus has really been just on the build, how fast, how light can you make things, you know. Um, and nobody's ever really taken the time to focus on the actual flying aspect. So I, I, I like this. I like it a lot. Um, it is new, so, you know, as we start playing with this, we'll probably be ironing out some kinks along the way. Um, if you guys have any ideas about, you know, how the point system should work, put it in the comments. I'm sure Immersion is going to be paying attention to this channel. Um, and also even just send the feedback directly to them, uh, info at ImmersionRC.com. Whether you've got some feedback on how that gaming system should work, maybe some new gaming ideas or even just the OSD and Vortex in general. Um, I'm, I, I really believe that they're out here to, to go ahead and, and try and help push this hobby into the next level. So uh, that's not going to happen without you guys. So if you have any comments, please put them in. If you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe. If you don't, I'm sure you'll leave a positive comment there anyways. And if you haven't already, um, check out some of these videos that I've done with the Vortex. Uh, I'll continue to be doing some more, but so far I've got three. Just keeping a little diary of, uh, of me and my Vortex because I've been having a lot of fun. And I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of fun too. So, until next time guys, enjoy.